All right. So, with this unit, okay, can anyone describe everything that we've done with this unit? Because it's centered around what? Configurations. True. Configurations, yes. Bohr models, yes. Dot diagrams, yes. Quantum numbers, yes. That all deal with what? Electrons, that's what this unit deals with. Okay, so some terminology that we would like to apply, well, that we would like you to apply. I have no idea how to spell this. A-U-F-B-A-U, A-U-F-B-A-U. Okay, so some of this content on page 110, okay, sorry, 111, okay, we would like you to know this, And the Pauli exclusion principle, I'm not quite sure. Okay, that's okay, Pauli. That's not right. <clears throat> okay, so there's some common ways that we can apply this. And we'll get further into that here in just a moment. Okay, so when we look at page 111, I know I said 110, I meant 111. <clears throat> okay, the first rule shows the order in which electrons occupy orbitals, orbitals according to uh, the Afabu principle. An electron occupies the lowest energy orbital that can receive it, okay? So, in specific terms, an electron will occupy, what do we say, orbital, the lowest energy orbital, that can receive it, I think is what it says. Well, I, we are. I mean, chances are, if you look around, yeah, certain people are, which um, I, you, you have a book too, but this is where this content comes from. Okay, so when we say the lowest energy orbital that can receive it, okay, if you look to the right, it shows a specific diagram in figure uh, 16, okay, and what that is illustrating is, like you just said, the slide rule, okay, so perhaps this will help you separate that content out. We could just put this in parentheses, but that wouldn't be on your evaluation. But in short, okay. Now, the place that that makes the most, I say makes, makes the most sense is once the 3P energy level is full, it doesn't go to the 4 excuse me, the 3D does it, okay? And that's explained to you in this slide rule. I 
Okay, so what this is saying in the Afabu principle, an occupy, an electron will occupy the lowest energy orbital that can receive it. And that is illustrated here. Typically, we think that after 3P, we think just because of numbers only, you go to the 3D. But no, that is not the case. It takes less energy for the 4S level to fill up than it does the 3D. And that is why we pertain or use the slide rule, and that explains the Afabu principle. So if you can associate the slide rule with this, you're a third of the way home. Why is it not half? Just one? Because we got two more. One out of three? Thirty-three percent, as if my math is correct. Okay. Then, when we look at the next one, let's see here. That's written in. Yeah, we'll just writ, writ, write that in black as well. So then we can tell the difference between these two. Okay, Hun's rule then. These are occupied. Okay, we're not quite going to finish that because we can make sense of this. <clears throat> you can pick a P block element or a D block. Okay, so where is nitrogen located on the table? What block though? So how many horizontal lines is that? Okay, and the second energy level, right? And then what column in the P block? Okay, it's the fifth column of the uh, energy level, but of the P block, it's only in the third, correct? So according to Hun's rule then, No, the bus seat rule. better known as the bus seat rule. So orbitals of each energy level are occupied by one electron. So these are the orbitals of each energy level must be occupied by an electron. Okay. Must uh, by one electron before any orbital is occupied by a second, I'm willing to bet that's what, by a second electron. Okay, so then, like you had pointed out, the bus seat rule. And 
then probably the most simple of all of them is you could say element 6 or element 8, element 9. Okay, so carbon is element 6. Okay, because nitrogen is 7, correct? So that must mean if it's one less electron, that's one less arrow then. So what we could do for that is as follows. Okay, so we're going to put nitrogens, quantum numbers, okay? And then below it, we'll put carbons, okay? So since they are both located in that vicinity on the periodic table. What is N for nitrogen? What is L for nitrogen? What is M for nitrogen? What is S for nitrogen? Okay. So then if we're going to subtract one, now we're going to be talking about carbon. Certainly, I'm not hearing uh, like a vibrating ringtone, am I? Well, you know, it's one of them things. Let's not be the one that ruins it for everybody. What is there anything that changes across here? Okay, what is, maybe I should do this so it's in a vertical column. Um, <laughs> I'll put one that can stand out. Again, this is the variable N, this is the variable L, this one's M, and this one is S. Okay, so what is N for carbon? What is L for carbon? What is M for carbon? And then what is S? Okay. So this pattern shows up between elements that are right next to each other in the periodic table. It doesn't necessarily have to be right next to each other. They could be uh, somewhere in the middle, for instance, and on the end. But when you look at this, the Pauli exclusion principle is say, stating what about the quantum numbers? Well, what does it say on page 212? The Pauli exclusion principle means what? And the same atom can have what? Same set. Same set of four quantum numbers. So that is what we are illustrating here. But to me, what makes the most sense, yeah, since that's this color, to me, I'd rather have you associate with this. No two elements What would you guess? No two elements can have the same what? Same four quantum numbers. Okay. So we're, I'm going to write really small here. Just by seeing this, what is everything that you think you can tell me as far as electrons? Where's that at? Where is that at on the table? So what number? Oh, I'm sorry. That's a uh, not an element symbol, but rather a letter. For, for down here, not spin, 
but what does it mean by the S block? Okay. What would you be able to decipher if you saw this? Okay. And then. Okay. All right. Now, that's not to say that some of these definitions, this is what they're based off of. So be prepared that these could be uh, mixed around. Same terminology, but kind of mix the words around. The, the easiest example that I say is when you look at the nucleus of a cell. What is everything you can tell me about the nucleus? The of a cell, not an oh, element. God. See, it's not that you're wrong. I mean, you're uh, associating that with the nucleus of an element. We, but we want an organism, a nerve cell, for instance. What can you tell me about the nucleus of that? Typically, where is it found? In the middle. In the middle of the cell. And what does that nucleus do because of DNA? It tells it what to do. It directs its activities. So... The definition of a nucleus might be an organelle found in the center of the cell that determines that cell's activity. Okay? Or the definition might say the nucleus is a structure that determines the cell's activity and is found in the center of the cell. Okay? Same definition, but the words are turned around. Okay? That's something that we need to have you be able to decipher between what is actually given to you in, in the book because they're not always going to be the same content that you see. In other words, when you're doing your scouting for volleyball, basketball, any one of those sports, is a school or a team going to do everything that you think that they're going to do for scouting or are they going to change what it is that they're doing before the next? They're probably going to change their habits. Okay. Can we erase this? So, all right. Correct. It's not just going to be problem. Could be some matching terms on there based off of that content. Oh, 20? No, not 20. We're paying attention. I Probably 10, somewhere around there. Sorry. Oh, we. If he was a vet man. Yeah. If I said that in the past, uh, a good lesson for you uh, moving on to technical school or college. If they're taking time to write that down, that's probably a good idea that you do that as well. Okay. 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 
So let's look at it this way. We'll keep this really, really simple. Uh, hmm. What can you tell me about batteries? There's a certain metal in there. That's where it's located on the table. You're not wrong. Yeah, lithium batteries. Okay, that's why they're called alkaline batteries. Okay, so like you said, element number three. Okay, so if this gets lost or donated, it's no longer there. Okay? What's going in here? What's going in here? What's going in here? Now, add those together. Okay? So, that is now an ion now. Okay? You could say, when... Okay, is that the case? Is it only elements that lose electrons when an ion is formed? Well, we can go all the way to the other side. Okay, does this look like an ion to you? No, why not? Well, it hasn't done that yet. Okay. So this is neutral, but if this electron was here, now it's over here. What do we put inside of here now? You're doing, you're doing the math in your head. You're too far ahead of yourself. So where did this number come from? Actually, well, it's positive too. Right there, right? Yep. So where do you suppose this number is going to come from? No. 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 First of all, what element is this? Fluorine. What type of charge does fluorine form? Negative one. So that must mean if it's negative one down here, ten, ten goes in there. Oh, yep. There we go. Negative ten. Okay? And that number comes from two plus two plus five plus one. Negative ten. Okay? So an element that loses an electron or what did fluorine do? Okay. So then cations and anions refer to a charge. So you got a 50-50 chance. If this is lithium, which it is, this one's fluorine, which it is, which one forms the positive charge? Lithium. Lithium does. So therefore, that is a cation. When an element forms So then, what would we say about an anion then? Forms a negative charge. Anion. OK. 
Okay. And let's see once how we did. If we actually go back to the glossary. And let's see here. All the way back to... 929, ion, in an atom, radical or molecule that has gained or lost one or more electrons and has a negative or a positive charge, okay? That's what we're talking about here. When, if we lose an electron like we did here, forms a positive charge. If we gain an electron like we did over here, forms a negative charge. That's what an ion is, okay? Then... If we look at an anion, okay, on page 924, an ion that has a negative charge. Look at what we said. Element forms a negative charge. So then just what you would guess, a cation is an element that forms a positive charge. And we look at page 925, an ion that has a positive charge or an element, whichever way you want to look at it. All right, which we have this vocabulary that you've been using, just didn't realize you were using it. Then we had Bohr models. We did just a brief review of that. Uh, some quantum numbers. The only thing we did not do was a configuration or an orbital diagram. Those will be on there too. Oh, dang it. I don't know yet. We'll see. Okay. Let me, I am willing to bet that I have some papers to hand back to you. So hold that thought for just a moment. So as far as I'm concerned, the rest of the time is yours unless you want to talk about a configuration, a Bohr model, an orbital diagram, or a dot diagram. We can. What do we need bonus points for? All right, so we'll continue with this, and we'll catch up to you next time.